you watch these impeachment hearings, you feel a little bit like it's, yeah, there's a lot at stake, but nobody's dying, right? Nobody's gonna die. Well, guess what? In Ukraine, people have been dying. This morning, more unidentified pro-Russia armed militias controlling the streets of Crimea's capital. Since Russia took over Crimea, basically, they have also had de facto control over access to the Sea of Azov. Commander Pavel Sergeyevich tells us one of his men was shot dead by a sniper 10 days ago. Ukraine is the number one place where Russian and Western interests clash today. This uh, attempt by the president to leverage American influence in Ukraine for the purposes of his election campaign is very problematic because by complicating the private and the public, he has created confusion about our goals. He's undermined the American case for democracy in Ukraine, for rule of law. And Russia, I think, is quite happy about that. He takes Crimea. He's sort of, I mean... But you said you might recognize that. I'm going to take a look at it. But, you know, the people of Crimea, from what I've heard, would rather be with Russia than where they were. And you have to look at that also. The main tendency of American foreign policy since 1945 has been to promote a liberal order, an order in which countries are democratic, obey the rule of law, do not allow their, their governments, their states to be undermined by corruption. One of the best examples of an American recommitment to these ideals, these democratic rule of law ideals, has actually been our support for Ukraine. I worked to advance U.S. policy, fully embraced by Democrats and Republicans alike, to help Ukraine become a stable and independent democratic state with a market economy integrated into Europe. The security assistance that we provide it takes many forms. These weapons um, and this assistance um, it allows the Ukrainian military to deter further incursions by the Russians. A secure, democratic and free Ukraine serves not just the Ukrainian people, but the American people as well. To withhold that assistance for no good reason other than help with the political campaign made no sense. It was it was counterproductive to all of what we had been trying to do. President Trump is facing impeachment proceedings because there is evidence to suggest that he tried to leverage the power of his office for personal gain. It is in fact perfectly normal for American presidents to pressure other leaders or other countries to do things we'd like them to do. The distinction, however, is when an American president is pressuring a country to do something that he wants them to do for his own personal benefit, in this case, winning an election. That is a big no-no. You heard the president's voice on the call. I did. And you heard him raise that subject again that Ambassador Sondland had raised before about investigating the Bidens, right? Frankly, I couldn't believe uh, what I was hearing. Um, it was probably an element of shock that uh, maybe in certain regards, my worst fear of how our Ukraine policy could play out uh, was playing out how this was likely to have uh, significant implications for U.S. national security. What really worries me is that you end up with the personalization of American foreign policy. Foreign powers begin to assume that they're not reacting to a coherent set of policies or a coherent set of principles. They figure out it's all about this one guy. The president-elect's new luxury hotel seems to be the new in-spot, the place for foreign governments and special interests to show loyalty to Donald Trump. The Kingdom of Bahrain rented out the presidential ballroom at an estimated cost around $100,000 to celebrate its national holiday. The Chinese government has given a preliminary green light to Ivanka Trump's company for five more trademarks. We've seen the example of President Zelensky in the rough transcript of that phone call trying to basically abase himself to President Trump, to flatter him, to push all the right buttons. The then U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch, was withdrawn at the request of the Trump administration before her term was actually up. She was targeted by Rudy Giuliani uh, and his parallel foreign policy. She wasn't doing what the president wanted, and so she was forced out. But if ambassadors are dispatched, fired, terminated, because this person is perceived to not be implementing the president's 
personal agenda, that sets a terrible precedent for U.S. foreign policy. If, you know, the ambassador in a particular country is pursuing some personal agenda, asking the other country to do him or her little favors, well, guess what? The other country will take advantage of that. All of the issues that we started to discuss today and that you on the committee have been deeply involved in began with Russia's illegal annexation of the peninsula of Crimea from Ukraine. There is a great deal of hostility and, Ill and uh, malign intent uh, towards Ukraine, and it suits uh, the Russian government uh, very much if we are also looking at Ukraine as somehow a perpetrator of malign acts against us. Privately, some Ukrainian soldiers admit to feeling uneasy. They fear that the White House's fickle behavior may strengthen Russia's position. I think a lot of people have lost sight of the fact that Ukraine is fighting for its existence as an independent, free and independent nation. Russia has invaded it. It's bitten off a huge chunk of Ukrainian territory. The first time that that has happened since the end of the Second World War in Europe, that one country is simply annexed part of another country. And as we sit here and talk about this in our comfortable office, Ukrainian troops are on the front lines in eastern Ukraine, fighting and dying. Anything we can do to enable the Ukrainians to defend themselves against aggression is something to be welcomed. Instead, we have the story of an American president undermining our effort to assist them in resisting that aggression. At any level, that's extremely dangerous, and having it come from the highest level is most dangerous of all.